Earth is no stranger to apocalypses. The world has already ended several times throughout Earth's history, whether it be during the Great Oxygenation event, or the Great Dying, or the asteroid strike that killed the dinosaurs. Some of the worst mass extinction events, up to 90% of life on this planet has died. This could happen again. But this time around, humans live on Earth, and most of us enjoy living. So, people have been thinking about ways to get rid of the risk of extinction for a while now. This has led to the idea of evacuating Earth, which is decently popular in science fiction. Some disaster has occurred on Earth, and the survivors need to leave it in search of a new home. Most evacuating Earth scenarios range from somewhat plausible to just downright absurd, which inspired me to make this video. What kind of disaster would actually cause humanity to be forced to leave Earth, and how would we realistically do it? First, I should talk about what evacuating Earth actually means. What I mean by evacuating Earth is that all or a large majority of humanity leaving the planet to escape some sort of impending disaster, or a disaster that has already occurred. But the nature of this disaster will heavily affect how the evacuation actually plays out, as well as the amount of warning we get. Before I talk about what could force humanity to leave Earth, there are a few misconceptions about this idea. People tend to throw around evacuating this planet a bit too much. An evacuation of Earth should be the last, worst-case Hail Mary solution. We should not be willing to leave this planet behind, ever. It's where we were born, it will always be easier to fix Earth than to leave. I'll talk about this more soon, but to put it simply, there is not a single apocalypse scenario in the universe today that would be bad enough to force us to evacuate Earth. Before I start, I should also quickly mention that I'm talking about the present day in this video. I can't predict what things will be like thousands of years in the future, so I'm sticking to assuming that if an evacuation scenario needed to happen, it would happen today. So when I say that there's no reason to evacuate Earth, I mean there's no reason to do so right now or in the foreseeable future in the next century or so. The most common scenarios people sometimes assume would warrant an evacuation of Earth are some sort of climate disaster or asteroid impact. The climate disaster scenario is one I have a particular issue with. Climate change is not a reason to evacuate Earth. I've seen people seriously talk about this like it's a good idea, and it isn't. Climate change, especially the one that's currently being caused by humans, is very bad, something we need to fix, and will make life on this planet much worse over the next few decades. But it will not cause the extinction of humanity, nor will it make Earth completely uninhabitable, forcing our evacuation. I've mentioned this in my video about terraforming Mars, but I'll say it here again. There is nothing humanity could possibly do to Earth to make it less habitable than the other worlds in the solar system. You could launch a full-scale nuclear war, have a nearby supernova decimate the ozone layer, have a supervolcano eruption, an asteroid impact, and massive solar flares occur all at the same time, and Earth would still be the most habitable place in the solar system by far. Finding another planet if climate change gets bad isn't just a bad idea, it isn't just cowardly, it just wouldn't work. The only way to make Earth inhospitable to all forms of life is to glass the entire surface of this planet and pummel it to such an extent the oceans boil off and the entire planet is covered in lava. The only way you'd be able to kill every last life form on Earth is to vaporize every last atom on this planet down to the upper mantle, and there just isn't any event in the universe that could do that right now. There is no realistic climate scenario that would require an evacuation of Earth that we couldn't fix, especially if we're using the space-based climate change solutions I talk about in my video about colonizing space to save Earth. The second most common scenario is an asteroid impact, and some of these get even more outrageous. I can't for the life of me find the name of it, but I once heard of a book where Earth got hit by an asteroid, and because of this, all of humanity not only had to leave Earth, but go all the way to Alpha Centauri. I don't think I need to explain how much of a terrible idea this would be, even if Alpha Centauri hosted a literal Earth clone. A species capable of interstellar travel can easily deflect an asteroid, and if they somehow don't have any advance warning, an asteroid impact the size of the one that killed the dinosaurs, or bigger, is something humanity would survive. If the dinosaur-killing asteroid hit Earth right now, humanity would not only survive, but our population would still be measured in the billions. It's the same thing for nuclear war as well. Obviously, both of these scenarios would be very bad and billions would die, but would not kill every single human or cause our extinction. This is true for pretty much every evacuating Earth scenario, including everything from climate disasters to alien invasions. Humanity has a far better chance of survival if we fortify Earth and the solar system at large. Just as a reminder, this isn't an argument against space exploration in general. Humanity will be much better off if we're spread all around the solar system instead of on one planet. But even if we do have space colonies, evacuating Earth just isn't a good idea when defending it is not only much easier, but way cheaper. More space colonies will help us defend Earth, but they should not be lifeboats for us to cling to if Earth dies. There are also scenarios where we would want to evacuate Earth, but couldn't because we wouldn't have any warning. A gamma ray burst is the best example of this. 
There are no gamma ray burst candidates within any dangerous distance to Earth, but if there were, we would have no warning, since gamma ray bursts travel at the speed of light. If we got unlucky enough and the burst was headed in our direction, and was close enough, it would fry whatever hemisphere happened to be facing the source at that time, and that's a pretty good contender for wiping out all of humanity. There's no way to stop a gamma ray burst, so if it was possible to get a warning ahead of time, we'd probably want to evacuate. But we couldn't because we'd have no warning. Luckily, a gamma ray burst is not going to happen. We've cataloged every gamma ray burst candidate close enough to us to do damage, and none of them pose a threat. The same is also true of supernovae. There just aren't any stars about to go supernova that are close enough to us to do damage. But there's another scenario that may warrant the evacuation of Earth, and that's a rogue planet, star, or black hole entering the solar system. This is incredibly unlikely, and even if it were to happen, the chance that this object would pass anywhere near Earth is even more unlikely. But it doesn't need to pass very close to either eject Earth out of the solar system or toward the Sun. But rogue planets and stars in particular we would see thousands of years in advance, and would have plenty of time to prepare. Black holes are a different story, since you can't really see them until they're much closer, unless they're interacting with something. But then again, once a black hole enters the solar system, from what I can tell, the X-ray radiation coming from it would just fry everything anyway, so we wouldn't have much of a chance to leave. Even if we did, this would be a solar system evacuation scenario, not just an Earth evacuation one. So, as I was researching this, I originally thought there would be at least one scenario where evacuating Earth was a good idea. But the more I looked, the more I found that there really is no reason. It's much easier to survive on Earth in the case of a climate disaster, asteroid impact, or nuclear war. There are no nearby candidates for a supernova or gamma ray bursts. If aliens or some rogue AI decided to attack us, we'd be dead anyway, as anyone trying to escape would have their engine plumes seen and hunted down. We'd see rogue objects hundreds or thousands of years in advance, so have plenty of time to get out of the way. Sure, in some of these scenarios, many people would choose to leave, but I see that as more of a retreat than an evacuation, as the majority of the population would remain on Earth. There's no realistic reason I can think of that would warrant an evacuation of Earth. It will always, without exception, be easier to defend Earth. Instead of packing up and leaving, deflect the asteroid. Instead of using our infrastructure to build ships to leave Earth, build more things to help people survive on Earth. Instead of using Moon or Mars colonies as places for people to evacuate, use them as resource mines to build up space infrastructure immune to disaster on Earth, making it easier to recover. So, let's make up an evacuation scenario anyway. Say, everything goes really bad, and for some reason, all the governments of the world decide that evacuating Earth is our only chance of survival. But as I've already explained, there really isn't a reason to do this, and any conceivable disaster would be easier to survive by either defending Earth or, in the worst cases, defending the entire solar system. But there's at least one highly specific edge case where an evacuation would be necessary, a rogue planet on collision course with Earth that we didn't spot early enough. Let's say, in this hypothetical scenario, this planet started approaching Earth thousands of years ago when humans didn't have telescopes capable of seeing it. By the time we did realize what it was, we weren't aware it was on a collision course until modern day. When it first became visible, telescopes to detect it hadn't been invented, and by the time they were, it took several more decades before its trajectory was calculated. Say, 50 years before impact, for no reason in particular other than it's a nice number. So, humanity has 50 years to pack up and leave Earth before it's totally destroyed and all life dies. If this were to happen, how would we do it? First, we need a destination. Usually that would just be Earth, as the humans would return once Earth had recovered from the disaster. But in this case, there won't be an Earth left to come back to, so we need another place to go. Any place beyond the solar system is off the table. It's simply not worth it when compared to the huge distances, even if Alpha Centauri hosted a 100% Earth-like paradise planet, which it most likely doesn't. None of the planets in the solar system are good targets either. Many stories include humanity evacuating to Mars, but in this case, we simply don't have enough time to prepare Mars for billions of people. So, the best destination is probably no destination. For the evacuation to work at all, we'll need ships capable of hosting millions of people for years at a time. How about we just don't leave those ships? We just need to make sure they can be self-sustaining for decades, or make them capable of harvesting asteroids for things like water. At the very least, this should keep people alive until we find a more permanent solution. Instead of moving to an uninhabitable planet, we just stay on the ship specifically designed to be habitable. We can figure out a longer-term solution later. Right now, the goal is to just get out in 50 years. Now, the problem becomes how exactly we're going to build the ships needed to evacuate humanity. There are 8 billion people on Earth right now, and 50 years from now in 2074, it's estimated that number will be closer to 10.3 billion. 
we would need a lot more than a miracle to get 10 billion people off the planet in less than 50 years. Luckily, Earth has a saving grace, the moon. For reasons I've covered in other videos, the moon is by far the best place to colonize after Earth, mainly because of three reasons. It's close to Earth, has a ton of resources, and has low gravity and no atmosphere, making rockets extremely easy to launch. These are the exact three things that would be needed to very quickly build and launch gigantic ships needed to get all of humanity off Earth. Earth is a terrible place to make ships. It has high gravity and a thick atmosphere in the way. We need to build these things in space, and harvesting the moon is the best way to do this. So, in a scenario like this, I'd expect governments and companies alike to immediately begin a rapid industrialization of the moon. We would build the parts for ships on the moon, launch them in orbit to be put together, and the ships would then be sent to Earth orbit to pick up passengers. The moon, obviously, currently is no industrial capacity. It would take years just to build factories up there to start building ship parts. But I think it's a much better idea than building it on Earth. We could much more easily start gathering materials and building on Earth, but the launch costs alone would immediately make it very expensive and difficult. The moon also has no environmental regulations, but given there won't be an environment on Earth left in 50 years, I'd expect those restrictions to be lifted there as well. But either way, I'm guessing we see ships built both on the moon and Earth. We'd obviously need a lot of international cooperation to get this done, but I don't expect every single country to just put aside their differences and work together. Rather, governments would probably prioritize their own citizens first. The US can make their own fleet of ships, China makes their own, etc. Either way, building ships is the easy part. The harder part would be getting everyone onto them. You could imagine entire wars being fought over what country gets how many passengers on what ship. We'd also need a whole separate fleet of rockets on Earth, since the ships would probably exclusively be in orbit, not landing to pick people up. We'd need rockets that put Starship to shame. Rapidly reusable, hopefully multiple times a day, and capable of bringing hundreds or thousands of people to orbit. But this is getting extremely speculative, and I don't really know how things would go from beyond this point. Maybe once ships begin leaving, they'd begin spreading out to their own destinations. Maybe a few would try landing on Mars or Venus or Titan in hopes of creating colonies there. I'd expect humanity to spread out across the solar system, and it probably wouldn't be a grand migration where every human goes to the same place. But that's where I'll end this scenario. I can't really say much after some very general stuff, because the nature of the evacuation depends highly on what's causing it. If we only have, say, 20 years of warning, then that's another story. The exact specifics of how an evacuation scenario will play out I can't predict, but I think in all cases, it would probably involve us using the moon to build and launch ships. But as I've hopefully shown, humanity is a lot more resilient than many authors give us credit for. Evacuating Earth is not something we do at the slightest hint of danger, it'd take nothing short of total planetary destruction for us to get out of here. I don't think evacuating Earth is something humanity will ever have to do, but if we do, at least it's possible. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space colonization.